Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the army begins enlisting ex-soldiers to bridge manpower shortfall is our first hot topic this morning. The Nigerian army has started recruiting former soldiers to address a significant manpower shortage within its ranks. This move aims to bolster the military, military's capacity in tackling various security challenges across the country, including insurgency, banditry and other threats. According to officials, the re-enlistment process targets experienced ex-soldiers who can quickly integrate and contribute to ongoing operations, providing much-needed support without the extensive training required for new recruits. This initiative reflects the Army's strategic shift towards strengthening its forces amidst persistent national security concerns. Our guest this morning is Okechuku Wangoma, Executive Director, Rule of Law and Accountability Center, RULAC. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning and uh, good morning uh, viewers. Okay, the army wants to re-enlist uh, uh, retired army officers uh, in, into the army because they do not need so much training anymore and they are going to provide the support. Let's start from that and how you feel about this move by the Nigerian army. Well, the issue about um, army recruitment, the challenges uh, with army recruitment has been recurrent. And I think that um, th this is not the first time that we have heard about this, the army asking their retired personnel to you know, come back. And um, at this, there are underlying issues, uh, you know, one of which is you notice that uh, there are many soldiers who have opted to retire prematurely, you know, um, owing to certain conditions within the military. And when, when the army um, announces opportunities for enlistment, people, young people are no longer interested in enlisting in the army. And, and I think there are, you know, um, um, issues around that, which I'm sure the army themselves are aware of. I know so many soldiers who have resigned or even or even gone on a wall on account of uh, you know the conditions within the military. Uh, the last time we had we've had a lot of young army officers come out to complain openly about the conditions in which they work, which is not you know enabling in terms of their welfare conditions, in terms of their being you know left in in the conflict zone for for a very long time without being allowed to go uh, back and meet with their families they're not being well paid their welfare is not adequate they're not being well compensated a lot of them die in the war front not because they don't have the capacity but because they're not well equipped the 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 the, the bandits the the terrorists they are sent to combat are more equipped than they are and so we have a high level of casualties within the army so it has brought down morale so so low that those within the military are quitting young people the army is no longer an, an attractive career for young people as it used to be in the past and it's not just the army even the police i'm, I'm sure you remember last year when the police also announced you know re re recruitment the, the former chairman of the police service commission himself had to come out to complain that young people are not uh, you know are, are, um, enrolling into the police because of what the those who are within the service are going through and what people who ought to have joined the police are hearing about how you know those in service are being treated so unless the conditions that have made it difficult for the army to you know be as it used to be an, an attractive career unless those conditions are changed and I, I think that we will we will continue to contend with this and, and maybe we need to talk about the poor welfare conditions the operational environment you know they are not well equipped um it, it's no longer Young Nigerians may view military career as less appealing, especially if the the perceived risks and the sacrifices do not match the potential uh, rewards. So I think that all these need to be addressed if this problem. And of course, perceived injustice when they they complain about the the conditions under which they work, they suffer re repercussions. 
I think that these are, are more uh, are some of the challenges that are uh, that account for this challenge that the army is now asking their retired personnel to return. Yeah, so shouldn't they be facing the, the rot in the army and correcting these anomalies that are making people to leave the army rather than calling for... Because if anybody wants to come back to heed this call, it will be those people who have retired. And those people who retired will retire from 60 or 65 years, which means the people who are young enough that could have returned may have left the army out of anger, and this group of people will not return. So we're looking at, a, at an aged uh, army which may not be able to fight the insurgents and banditry that we're talking about right now so are they not putting the cart before the horse as it were that's exactly the, the, the my point um, i mean if they don't fix those challenges for example personnel who have left due to um dissatisfaction will likely be hesitant to return, mm -hmm. particularly if the underlying issues remain uh, unaddressed, and those who, who who are potential recruits are also hearing about what is happening to those who are already within, and they know why they are leaving. So the army needs to begin to address issues of corruption, poor welfare condition, the uh, uh, in operational environment that is not conducive perceived injustice among personnel who, when they complain. Uh, you remember the case of the young woman who complained about being sexually harassed, and after the, the army gave their, their verdict, she believed, she felt that the, the verdict w was not fair and asked for the, 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 the report of the findings to be, be, be made public for, for, mm. for scrutiny. Many other we, women who would want to join the army, seeing what has happened to this woman, would not want to join. Those who have been arrested and, and put in the guard room because they come out to complain that we are being sent on a suicide mission, that we are sent to fight, but we're not given the equipment we need to fight. Our welfare is not being taken care of. We are not being adequately compensated. So, and you expect that people, that those who left because they are dissatisfied will be willing to come back. I mm. mean, that is, that doesn't make sense. They need no, no. to fix the challenges so that people can now begin to see the army again as, as an attractive ca career path. Mm. Okay, but well, right now, even when they are short-staffed, uh, there is a bill touted in the National Assembly to make the army, uh, to engage the army in farming. I don't know if you have seen that story. The House of Reps is planning to, uh, to pass a bill that will make the army to farm. And according to them, it will help to, uh, to drive away food insecurity, as it were, in our country. They will, you, they will have to do livestock and crop farming that can feed Nigeria and all that. I don't know what you have to say about that. Uh, knowing that we are short-staffed, and then this is what is being touted in the National Assembly. You, you, you can see that I have been smiling, and I see you also smiling while you're asking me this, this question, because you know it is laughable. I just read the news last night about uh, a, military, a military base in, um, in, um, somewhere in, in, in Niger State. Mm. I, 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 I don't know whether you read that news. In, in Niger State, a military base where bandits went and took over a, an entire military base and sacked the communities around. So these people are not even able to protect com community members who are unable to go to farm because bandits won't let them farm. And you're asking them to go and farm. Is that the answer to the, the question is, is the problem, I mean, the problem is, is not, uh, um, want of a, an alternative means of livelihood. You, you could then say they should, you should go and farm. They are saying that they are not, their welfare is not being well catered to. They are not being adequately equipped. There are complaints of corruption in the management of security funding. And nobody is being called to a, account. Um, we have had a lot of reports about military bases being overrun and taken over by bandits. And nobody is... Nobody is fired for that so it is if if the federal government is not able to do anything when these things happen it means they are admitting that they are not doing enough to equip the military to capacitate them to be able to carry out the, the, their 
for the, 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 their function. So this whole idea about a bill for to enable soldiers to, to farm, for me, it, it does not address the, the underlying issues, which is capacity, you know, welfare, and moral boosting. This is kind of, okay, the, the, a lot of those who have left are even uh, officers from the, you know, engineering corps. You, you, you know what it takes to train people as engineers in, in the army? Those who are there are, are already living, and, and your answer is for them to go and farm. I mean, I, I don't understand how that addresses the, the problem. Okay, so we've, we've talked about uh, the things that need to be corrected. There, there are things that need to be corrected. Just by way of emphasis, um, let's tabulate some of these things that you see that the army needs to correct immediately because it's not enough to just say that there are things that, uh, that, that are making the people to leave uh, and so on. So if we are to tell the army or the, the relevant authorities what they need to do to reform the army, what will these specific things be and how do you think they will go about it to put it in place? The first thing is to address resource, resourcing and funding military, military equipment, improving the welfare of officers. And by the way, when we talk about resourcing and funding, we have heard about allegations of corruption, mismanagement of you know security funds. These issues are not resolved. There are a lot of grievances within the military, especially among the officer corps, who feel that they are being shortchanged. When they complain, they are, they, they are put in the guardroom uh, and and uh, and uh, and dismissed. And so, unless you address these grievances, improve welfare, and then skill development programs, we you need to train. You need to maybe make the environment conducive for young people to want to join the army, and then skill development program so that you're able to have officer corps that that have certain skills, including engineering, you know, you know, you know, skills, and then retention strategies. How do you retain those that are already in the military so that they don't feel like leaving? And then recruitment campaigns. What do you do? to reassure young people that the military is a place that they can come and they will, they will enjoy the satisfaction of, of the job. If this are not done, or we will continue to, 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 to complain. Mm. It's, 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 in, it's interesting uh, that, that people are thinking about this and uh, their solutions seem to be uh, what, as we are talking now, is laughable and all that. But should these people even accept to come back? What kind of a military force do you see? Uh, do you think it will help in the way they are saying it to some extent, or do you think it's just a waste of time and exercise in futility? I, I tell you, I know a, lo a lot of uh, officers that have uh, left the army, you know, as a result of a, you know, dissatisfaction. And I've spoken with a, a number of them. They are not willing to, to come back. You see, even when they leave, they are still in touch with their colleagues who are in service, and they talk. Things are not changing. So I don't see them. The ones I've spoken to are not willing to come back because the conditions that made them leave have not changed. So I, I don't see them. See, the, the Nigerian problem needs to address the problems of our military. You can't be talking about recruitment when those who are already there are dissatisfied. They are aggrieved. They feel that they are not well treated. They can't even go to visit their families. They can't take care of their families. They are, you see, they, they, they are killed every day in their numbers, not because they cannot fight, but because they are not equipped to fight. The Nigerian government should first of all address this underlying issue before we start talking about recruitment. You can't ask people who have left because they are dissatisfied to come back. What has changed? I don't, I don't see the Nigerian army as it is now is not in a position to deal with insecurity because of dwindling morale, you know, uh, co corruption, and lack of resources. Unless these are addressed, unless these are addressed, we we'll continue to move round and round. And then we we'll, we we'll, we'll hearing, we we'll keep hearing our national assembly people um, proposing. 
bills that will that, that make no sense mm. oh, okay um security is about intelligence uh, no matter how many people you have in the army or police it's difficult to to secure a, a place if you don't have credible intelligence now they uh, the, the the NSC and other people are saying that uh, the security forces are not even ready to share intelligence among themselves and all that. And that is a problem they have to sort out. But my concern is the relationship between these uh, security forces and the people, because intelligence comes from the people, no matter how we see it. Uh, apart from technology, intelligence also comes from the people who are on ground where the crimes are committed and all those kind of things. So how would you describe the relationship between the army which is talking about being so short staffed and the people who are supposed to provide the relevant intelligence that will help them do their work well. What do you see that relationship as and how do you think it can be improved? You know that modern, modern crime re relies more on timely and reliable intelligence mm. than even on AK-47 and armored carriers. And like you rightly said, the, the security agencies rely on community members for reliable information and intelligence. But, when, but this can only happen when the communities have trust and confidence in the, in the security forces, that when they see them as as protectors and not as predators. In many communities, you, see, you hear about military reprisals, you hear about uh, accidental uh, bombing, you hear about uh, you know, people being killed, a whole family being ransacked and killed because uh, one person who is suspected to have committed a crime uh, is, 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 is traced to a, a, a particular community and then the whole community is raised down. As long as see, human rights violations erode public trust, they destroy public trust. The security needs needs the community for information. They need their partnership for e e effective performance. As long as there is no trust, and there is no trust because there is high level of human rights violations, unless this change, then we 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 can't have that partnership and trust that is necessary for effective performance. Okay. Uh, well, um, we do hope that um, this, uh, this relationship with the people will improve. We do hope that uh, the, the problems that are inherent in the, or are embedded in, this, uh, uh, in the army will be removed and then recruitment is done for young people to go. Because I don't see a situation where a 60-year-old or 65-year-old who has retired and possibly who has retired uh, like uh, three, four years ago, making him up to about 70, going back to, to the, the theater of operations to, to catch bandits or to catch insurgents or to do whatever they are supposed to do. I don't see that as yeah. something that is good enough for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, I agree with you. Yes. Well, this is how much we can take on uh, this segment today. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Wanguma, uh, for coming on the show. We're hoping that all these solutions you have proffered, the people who should listen are listening and they will do the needful. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you, Mr. Wanguma. My pleasure as usual. Mm. We've been talking with Mr. Okechukun Wanguma, Executive Director, Rule of Law and Accountability Center, RULAC. We were talking about the fact that the military is uh, uh, going to begin to re-recruit re uh, retired officers back into the military because they are short-staffed. Well, let's see how that goes. Uh, we're going to take a short break and when we return, we will be looking at the fact that our neighboring country, Ghana, is eyeing fuel imports from Dangote refinery. Stay with us.